we go to 1 Kings chapter 2, let's go from 36 to 46. 36 to 46. Now this is King Solomon speaking. The king sent and called for Shimei and says to him, Build yourself a house in Jerusalem. Wherever you live now, doesn't matter, relocate. Build yourself a house in Jerusalem and dwell there. And do not go out from there anywhere. Don't go anywhere. Stay in that house. For it shall be on the day you go out and cross the brook Kidron, know for certain you shall surely die. And your blood shall be on your own head. And she may say to the king, the saying is, do. But what choice did he have? That was the king saying it. As my lord the king has said, so your servant will do. So she may dwell in Jerusalem many days. <laughs> Now it happened at the end of three years. Two slaves of Shimei ran away to Achish, the son of Maka, king of Gath. And they told Shimei, saying, look, your slaves are in Gath. So Shimei arose, <laughs> saddled his donkey. He went to Achish at Gath, at Gath to seek his slaves. And Shimei went and brought his slaves from God. I think you remember he made a deal. He violated that deal. They told him, you are under house arrest. Stay in your house. Don't go anywhere. But his slaves ran away, so he went to go get his slaves. Solomon was told that Shimei had gone from Jerusalem to Gath and had come back. Then the king sent and called for Shimei and said to him, Did I not make you swear by the Lord? And were you saying, Know for certain that on the day you go out and travel anywhere, you shall surely die. And you said to me, The word I have heard is good. Why then have you not kept the oath of the Lord and the commandment that I gave you? The king said, moreover, to Shimei, you know, as your heart acknowledges, all the wickedness that you did to my father David, the past is coming now to the present. Therefore, the Lord will return your wickedness on your own head. But King David, King Solomon shall be blessed, and the throne of David shall be established before the Lord forever. So the king commanded Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, and he went out and struck him down, and he died. Thus, the kingdom was established in the hand of of Solomon. Praise the name of the Lord. She may have thought that it was over for David, so there was no risk there. So he spoke harshly to the king, cursed him, threw stones at him. Could you give me Proverbs chapter 14, verse 17? I just want the scripture to speak to us today. A quick-tempered man acts foolishly. A quick-tempered man acts foolishly. And a man of wicked intentions is hated. Quick-tempered. Quick-tempered. Combine quick temper with foolishness, they are twins. Proverbs 15, verse 28. Proverbs 15, verse 28. The heart of the righteous studies how to answer. But the mouth of the wicked pours forth evil. 
You see, a righteous man, they don't rush. They consider, how, what should I say? They don't run. They don't. <laughs> the righteous man considers his response. Everything is carefully considered. What the Bible is saying here is, the righteous man uses a filter. He filters his words. He filters his words. He filters them. He considers them. We spoke a little bit about this last week. I don't know why the Holy Spirit keeps pushing us in that direction. Proverbs 14.29 Proverbs 14, 29. He who is slow to wrath has great understanding, but he who is impulsive exalts folly. Impulsive. Whatever I want to say, I'm going to say it. Who, who does he think he is? I will say whatever to anyone. What is he going to do? Remember, she may thought that it was over for David. The people you disregard today. They may hold the key to your success at some point. The people you disregard, you look down upon, talk to any, any kind of way. Pastor friend of mine, like a father to me, he was sharing this on Facebook. Had a job. Didn't like the job. Well, he liked the job, but the people I didn't like how he was being treated and decided to just walk out. No notice, nothing. Just walk out. He went to school, graduated. Now he's looking for a job. He applied to a company, another company, good company now. And he was hired for the job. He was supposed to start the job on a Monday. Then he received a call that the Friday before that Monday. There was a lady there on the other side of the phone. The lady said, Mr. So-so-so, this is me, so-so-so. You remember me? I was the manager there at the company years ago, the company that you walked away from. And now I'm manager here too. So you see, I know you've been offered, but the, other, the, the offer is withdrawn. You can't work here. Sir, an impulsive man is a foolish man. Impulse. This is how I'm feeling. No filter at all. No filter. A lack of filter tells us that there is an abundance of foolishness there. Could you give me Proverbs chapter 16, verse 32? Proverbs chapter 16, verse 32. He who is slow to anger is better than the mighty, and he who rules his spirit than he who takes a city. You know what he's talking about there? Self-control. He who rules his spirit. He rules his spirit. Self-control. Self-control. I told you last week, it takes a great deal of self-control not to talk sometimes. Especially when there is provocation. Especially when you don't think you have anything to lose. What can he do to me? I don't need him. 
You don't need them today. Only talk about now. Because you don't know what tomorrow holds. I tell my family all the time. Those who know me, they know I say this a lot. The rain is coming down on you, and you run under a tree for shelter. Now the rain has stopped. You decided to defecate under the tree, and you walk away. What you forget is this. There could be another rain. Another rain may come. And you may find yourself under that same tree again. Your waste is sitting there for you. The waste you left there is there. Impulsive attitude. It won't get you anywhere. See, everybody has to put up with something. Everybody. It, that's what maturity is about. I was having a conversation with a lady. She was talking to me about her marriage, and she was all bent up and bent out of shape. She was going to walk. I told her, it doesn't take character to walk away. It doesn't. People with character stay, and they fix things. You're going to walk from this. You walk from this, you're going to walk from the next one. You walk from that one. Walk from, how many things are you going to be walking away from? You see, when God wants to build you, he allows you to go through some things. When God was going to build David, he allowed some things to happen. That was after he had been anointed. The anointing came before the training. You see, being anointed, <laughs> it doesn't mean you have character. Remember we were talking about this last week? Lack of character destroys the church. If you have a title or a position, if you have a business, if you have money, if you are the head of a family, whatever you may be, if you have no character, you will destroy whatever, it is, whatever is given to you. Character will build you up. I referred you to something Warren, Pastor Warren said, God is more interested in your character than in your pleasure. Than in your pleasure. Do you know Shimei didn't have to die? He didn't have to die. His mouth killed him. Attitude killed him. Throwing stones at the king, cursing the king because he felt he had nothing else to, to lose. You have nothing to lose today. What about tomorrow? You see somebody who says, I don't care. Well, let them continue to live. Just keep on living. You will learn to care. You will care. You will learn to care. You can't always say everything. Allow a filter. Allow a filter. Homes have been ruined by this reckless tongue, reckless attitude. You don't allow a filter. Allow your words to go through a filter. I'm sorry what I said to you, sweetheart. You know I didn't mean that. Really? You didn't mean that? Where did that come from if you didn't mean it? So a man who has no filter is a man. A woman who has no filter is a woman who will continually apologize, wishing they could take things back. 
constantly wishing they could take things back. I'm so sorry. Do you know, even if you are offended, rightfully so, legitimately so, before you respond, weigh your words carefully. Weigh them carefully. Weigh them carefully. You students say stuff to their teacher. Years later, they are now calling for a reference. You live in a job and you disrespect everybody. Now you are calling back for a reference. Even if you never have the need to ask for a reference, is God happy with you? A reckless tongue? No discipline? Can't hold back? He said this to me. I'm going to also say something that will really hurt him. Huh? A child of God. And like a sheep, like a sheep. Do you know who they are talking about? The Lord Jesus Christ. The one we are following. Like a sheep to the slaughter. A sheep to the slaughter. Proverbs 19, 11, as we're closing. The discretion of a man makes him slow to anger. That means, oh. It's not mouthing off. It's not just going off. The discretion of a man or a woman makes him or her slow to anger and his glory is to overlook a transgression. Now check that out. That means your glory is to be a forgiving person. Your glory is to overlook a transgression. Your glory is is to overlook a transgression. You know what they did to you is wrong. You know, it's not like you are a fool. You are not a fool. You are aware of what they did. You just look the other way. You see how God's standard is different from man's standard? In the world, they would say, he's a fool. The Bible says, it's to your glory. It's to your glory. To your glory. Don't make a mountain out of every molehill. You can't die on every hill. Can't make a big deal out of everything. Don't make a major out of a minor. You can't, you, you, everything is a big deal. How can everything be a big deal? Every insult, you have to respond. Everything you don't like, you got to react. You're going to make, you are, don't you think you'll be exhausted very soon? You know something funny they said? It takes more energy to be angry than to be happy. I see some people. And I said, do you know you will look better if you will just smile? I mean, even the way you look, you are developing wrinkles. Because you are angry, tight-faced, tight-faced. Are you okay? Face is tight like this. Why? 
are you so angry? You know, when you are when you smile, you look more beautiful. <laughs> Do you know your food will taste better in your mouth when you are not angry? You are angry, they give you good meal, it won't taste right. You are in your house, you won't even enjoy that house. The house you paid for, that you are working for. Because you are so angry. May God bless you. Your peace, your joy depend on your ability to overlook transgression. There will always be transgression. Your peace and your joy will depend on your ability to overlook transgression. Overlook it. Let it go. Let it go. Usually sometimes when I'm talking to some workers in the office, and I'll tell them, uh, they, sometimes they want to tell me some things, and I say, well, don't, don't bother telling me. I know. The fact that I don't say anything, don't imagine that I'm not aware. I'm aware. I just look the other way. How am I going to? I don't want to grow old too fast. You think I'm going to go home with all the problems of the church on my head? This small head? I have, pro I have my own issues to deal with. No, I'm not dealing with that. I look the other way. For it's the church of Christ. He will build his church. He will build his church. He will provide for his church. He said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. I'm not going home with the problems of the church. I'll pray. Once I'm done with prayer and I'm doing my best and I'm giving, the Bible says it's required of the steward to be faithful. I will be faithful. Very faithful. Whether I'm pastor or not pastor, whether it doesn't matter. You could check my record, go back to all the churches I ever belonged to. I will give my best and I will be faithful. I will be very faithful. It's required of a steward to be faithful. I will be faithful and I will be prayerful. Then I'm done. Oh, I will be joyful after. I will be joyful after. They're telling me, don't you hear this is happening over there? I'm done. Please give me some rice, let me eat, and then I'll lay down and get my rest. I'm not going to worry about it. Your joy and your peace depends on your ability to overlook transgression. Just because you can doesn't mean that you should. Just because you can does not mean that you should. Having the right to do something doesn't make it the right thing to do. Just because you have the right to do something doesn't mean it's the right thing to do. Words and actions have consequences. Allow everything to go through a, a filter. Let it go through a filter. You will go. You will grow, I meant to say. You will grow. And God will be proud of you. God will be very proud of you. God said to Satan, have you seen my servant? <laughs> Job. Have you, have, you, have you seen? Where have you been? God said. Oh, running to our friends. Oh, wow, 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 wow. You're welcome. Now, have you considered my, my servant? There is none like him. None. He said, but the only reason you did that is because you, you're giving him. The, take stuff away. Just take stuff away. I, I, I mean, you want to have a deal? Let's have a deal. You want to bet? Let's bet. Take stuff away. It's my guy. Took children away. Took wealth away. Took health away. And the guy was standing. You overlook transgression. You overlook your discomfort. You overlook a lot of things. You lean on him. Allow your words to go to a filter. Allow your words to go to a filter. Otherwise, if you are not careful, you will be changing job to job. You will be running. You will find yourself constantly running. 
Your friends 10 years ago. I, I, I can I study people's character. If I say, who are your friends? They are friends you just met last year. What, what about the old ones? They can't keep friendship. They can't keep them. Your friends are always new. They are always the new ones. Where are the old ones? They don't even exist. May God build you up. And may God strengthen you. May the glory of the Lord overshadow you. May the word of God penetrate your heart and walk its way and rebuild you and remake you so that you come out shining like gold. I'm not saying you won't have. That's for another day. Shall we rise? Shall we rise? Shall we rise? Shall we rise? You know, God is working on you. That's the, he's working on you. He's working on me too. There are some things I can tell you about myself, but I won't. I won't. Believe me, God is working on me. He will allow some things to happen. And I'm saying, God, may God bless you. May God bless you. May the glory of the Lord overshadow you. In life, may you not fail. In every area of life, may God speak on your behalf. When trouble comes, may mercy speak for your behalf. When sickness or adversity come your way, may the mercy of God speak on your behalf. I bless you in the name of the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worshiped. Hallelujah.